Welcome to Pulp Mythos. I'm Brian here with Larry and Spencer, and we're going to be discussing City on a Hill Season 2, Episode Number 4. If you've not hit the bell, sub button, all that good stuff, please do so. We do these reviews every single week. And we're going to start with the Campbell family, because they are clearly the central sort of focus, outside of, of course, DeCourcy and Jackie. Um, but the Campbell family are the central focus this season, and there was a lot of development in this particular episode, uh, specifically with the fact that Grace Campbell is starting to figure shit out. You know, her sons are involved in the crime. She doesn't quite know the extent yet. You know, Anton is, has been arrested he, on the gun charge. He had drugs on him. But DeCourcy is pretty sure that he was responsible for Raina's death, the young girl that was killed on Valentine's Day, and that he also shot uh, Junior, who's a character he's been gunning, trying to gun down for quite some time. Um, and then that led to Marco being killed, which was the young man that had been accepted to college. So that's pissing off Kelvin. He wants out at this point, but Anton's basically telling him as long as he's in jail, you know, you got to run the street situation. It's becoming a huge mess. Um, Anton is being stubborn as hell about the whole thing. And Grace doesn't seem to know what to do. It's a lot to talk about, but where do you guys want to start on that? And yeah, what are your thoughts on the storyline of the uh, Campbell family. I think it's brilliant. Uh, this episode, we've been curious and, you know, we've said that the mom probably didn't know. Uh, well, I didn't at first. I thought she knew, but <laughs> we, we came to the conclusion that, yeah, she probably didn't know, but this episode showed that she legit had no idea. And her reaction to it is she's pissed off at Anton. So that to me was an appropriate response to basically being screwed over by her son. She didn't know that he was in on all this stuff. She didn't know how, how bad of a person he was until this episode. And now she's trying to basically get Calvin on the straight or on the straight path. But his brother's just trying to undo all of that over and over and over. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those things where she had it wrong, like, because, you know, the younger brother's not as sneaky as, as he is, you know, they all thought, oh, it's him, he's trouble, and she's trying to, you know, straighten him out and everything, not knowing that he's not the real problem, it's her oldest son, you know, like, which you know, kind of reaffirms my, 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 my thought that, you know, like, Calvin's just really shitty, but, you know, also, I'm starting to think that they're not as well off as the slut show initially led us to think or at least they didn't used to be you know and, and which is where they started but the fact that they they are now still makes calvin seem pretty crappy you know like uh and it seems like he he roped his brother in on this and the idea that they'd make enough money and they'd get their mom out of this neighborhood and everything but you know now she's a part of this community action committee and it seems like she really wants to be a part of and help this community and uh they do have the money, I, I, I believe, to leave if they want. And, you know, Calvin has no intention of, of stopping. You know, this is the life that Calvin wants. You know, and most people aren't, like, I don't believe most people are doing this because they want to, you know. But Calvin is that rare exception where Calvin just wants to be shitty. Anton. Anton's the older brother. Oh, is, is Anton the older? Yeah. Anton okay. is the older. Okay, my yeah. mistake. Well, Cal I, was just, Cal I knew what you meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew where you were going. I just wanted to make sure. But they, I think in this episode, they said it. Like you just referenced, they weren't always, they didn't always have money. Because they said, I think Calvin asked Anton, he was like, you know, this originally was just to buy Mama a house and get out of, you know, the project. Right. And he had no response to that. So his brother is in it for the long haul now. Anton's, he has zero desire to <laughs> start living the straight and narrow path. Whereas Calvin, you know, after he saw his friend die who got accepted to a university and they were trying to move away from this and now they can't. So I'm really curious how Calvin's going to kind of navigate these waters because he does not want to do this anymore so i'm really curious if he's going to be able to get out or if his brother's going to end up getting him killed and, and the brothers both seem to be missing the the message or the the what their mother is trying to teach them 
she has status. She just and she has somewhat of a of power, but she just doesn't. She's not rich, but I don't think she wants to be. Um, that is not her ambition. That is not her goal. Like you said, her goal is to better the community, and that that completely went over their heads. And like you said, they they want to move out and buy a house. That's not what she's looking for. They're on the they're not on the same page as far as a family. Um, now we don't know any more background. We don't know what got them into the drugs directly. Where they're getting their supply. Um, any other family members or anything. We don't know that. The show has not told us. But as of at this point, like I said, they're not on the same page, and it's it's going to get rockier, uh, I think, as the series progresses. Yeah, and they're actively working against everything she's seemingly, you know, you know, given what all the characters on the show have said about her, they're working to, to destroy and actively destroying everything she's spent her entire adult life trying to build. Yeah, Anton act openly told his brother that he did, that casualties were okay. Yeah, you know, and he's looking at, and that was the point where he's like, "Dude, are you out of your damn mind?" Um, you know, their mother was out there. You know, yeah. like, what the hell? He was just like, "Mom was there. What if she was one of the strays?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know, it, oh, go ahead. Well, well, yeah. I mean, it's that, and the fact that his response to his brother just, you know. One, stating that he wants to just he wants to keep living and he wants a normal life was to was basically to say stop being a punk go out there and make my money you know it's yeah it's messed up well someone who lived that life and uh it came to a tragic ending last in last week's episode jimmy ryan is gone and uh we get his funeral we get you know sort of the reaction of various parties you know learning about it and specifically i think the two most important points we'll start with the funeral and then we'll go to the de Corsi scene but the funeral um it was very telling jackie was the only one there jimmy's girl was there that was it uh nobody showed up he nobody liked him everybody hated him the police were celebrating Jimmy was a shit person and everyone was glad that he was dead. And they even took a little joy in the fact that he was shot in the face. Um, but Jackie understood him and <laughs> Jackie's a very interesting character because Jackie too is a piece of shit and probably assumes his ending will be similar. Um, but his little prayer that he said to him, I don't know. It was a very Jackie moment and, and I, I quite enjoyed the scene. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was a good scene, and you know, like you said, Jackie kind of liked him because he was so messed up and such a weasel. Because Jackie's that same kind of guy, you know. Jackie's, for the most part, only looking out for Jackie. He's becoming a better human being, suppose, or at least he's trying to, you know. But for the most part, he only looks out for Jackie, and you know, that makes him more similar to Jimmy than well anybody else on the show. Yeah, he's. Very much like it, it's almost as if him and Jimmy are related because mm -hmm. the way they act, it's you know, that prayer of them both being pieces of shit is so spot on that it's crazy because they are, they're both awful shitheads, they're both awful human beings. But Jimmy just kept going further and further down that path where it, there was no redeemable. He couldn't redeem himself at this point. However, Jackie seems to be trying. So I'm really curious if he's going to be able to, or if this is just kind of a, he's dealing with it in his uh, own head and he's dealing with it by himself and he's not going to be able to overcome his demons. I, I'm really curious if it's going to go that path or if he's going to try and redeem himself. And and it also showed how Jackie views the world. You know, he has the whole line about don't look back, you know, that's talking to Jimmy and because there's nothing, you know, worth it. You know, like like Jackie really sees the world as shit. And you're right, though, he is trying, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. But yeah, Jackie, his, his view of the world, uh, how he views everything, even the story he tells, well, let's jump into it now. It, it's important. Um, when he's talking about t to Ricky, Ricky's a young man who. He's trying to get to lie to screw over DeCourcy. <laughs> and he tells the story about cigarettes. 
getting cigarettes for his mom and everything, but laying out that that was, you know, a contributing factor to him being on this path and realizing that the choices you make and the people around you when you're young guide you on that path. And he saw that he was screwing over this young man. He had gotten his mother back into alcoholism, even though she had, you know, announced that she would tried to stop, you know, get away from it. She had been like six months sober. And Jackie at that moment was like, you know what? I was screwed over when I was younger. I've been a piece of shit. I don't want to do the same to this kid. And maybe this one little thing, you know, will will atone to some degree. And of course, he talked to a priest who told him he had to pay a penance or whatever. Um, not Catholic, so I don't know all the rules. <laughs> um, but it was an important scene for Jackie, the character. What do you guys think about that? And how um, I was glad it went that way. I actually was feeling very sad for the whole Ricky storyline. Yeah, I was super, and not even just because it was a redeemable thing for Jackie. I was just hoping so much that Ricky wouldn't get screwed over and basically be a casualty of this pissing contest between DeCourcy and Jackie. Well, yeah, I think, I think part of it, though, too, was when he saw the mom. I think, you know, talking to the mom and talking about that how was definitely the trigger. And I think that's what caused him to, I don't think it had anything to do with Ricky. I think it had more to do with the mom uh, because I'm sure that his mom never tried to be better just by what he said and what he's alluded to that his mom was always a piece of shit and she just kept get, being awful. But when he saw the mom, uh, she's trying, she's trying to be better. She's trying not to, she's, you know, really putting forth the effort to not be a piece of shit. And I think that seeing that, is what triggered him to make those decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Cause you, I mean, you can kind of see it on his face where, you know, he thought he was looking in the mirror and he kind of was, you know, with his own situation, like, especially when she started yelling at him and everything. And like, maybe at first he thought he could go through with it. Cause he's like, well, this kid's going to wind up just as bad as me anyway. Look at this home situation. And, you know, and then he got another look a, late, a little later on and he said, well, there's a chance there's hope he's like and i'm the one snuffing that out you know his childhood might not be as bad as mine but uh you know i'm not really giving him a chance exactly um and, and then going back to the uh de Corsi, uh the jimmy situation de Corsi is well aware that and he even says it I love the whole way he describes how he looks at everything, talking about symmetry and everything. Like, of course, he's very intelligent and is very similar to Jackie. They're both very good at reading a situation and sort of knowing the answers. And he basically tells Kathleen, yeah, you killed him. <laughs> of course you killed Jimmy. Uh, but I don't really, you know, he, he doesn't say it outright, but he doesn't give a shit. But what he does care about is what was Jimmy up to, because he knows Jimmy's always doing something he's not supposed to, and perhaps that information could help him. And she does tell him what she knows as far as his ties to drugs. Um, how that'll play in later, I'm very curious. DeCourcy is trying to not only sort of build a case, but he's trying to figure out all the components of what's going on as far as the, the, the little drug war going on. Um, where does Kathy go from here, I wonder? Because... Uh, after that scene, we know Kathy's got her family. We know DeCourcy's somewhat on her trail, even though I don't think he'll use it against her. I mean, maybe he will. But what what is her next step in this story? What do you guys think? Well, you know, I mean, she's she's. it would be smart for her to be an informant, but, you know, it's just because, uh, I mean, honestly, to some degree, they, they definitely know it's her because, you know, and one thing DeCourcy was pointing out indirectly was, you know, how personal the the method of of uh, Jimmy's killing was, you know, that it was like I don't know anything about actual detective work, but often on these shows you'll see it's like, oh, he was shot in the face at point blank range, you know, this was a this was someone with a personal, a very personal grievance with this person, you know, like, but uh, you know, so I, so they kind of know it was her, and. Uh, but I don't, I don't know, like, maybe she's going to try not to rat because she feels very strongly about that. But, you know, I, uh, of course, he might wind in bringing her in. And I think, you know, in order to raise their kids and to provide some sort of life for them, her life may, to some degree, end up mirroring a little less scummy, of course, because she's not that person deep down. But mirroring Jimmy, she's going to have to do those things. She's going to have to be an informant. 
Well, and I'm curious too, because I think kick is going to be the bigger play in this because she, for whatever reason, you know, idolized her dad and her dad was not a good person. Frankie was not a great guy, but he lived by, you know, that Southie code that they were saying. And if the mom turns, I think that kick might be the, the driving force for the rest of their family's story. Because if she turns uh, to basically save herself, I think, and I mean, I would, but (laughs) if, you know, she turns to save herself, I don't know that kick is going to be able to let that go. Yeah. It's still weird how they keep dancing around Frankie's situation. Did you know, I like, I was paying very close attention. I have the subtitles on when I watch a lot of these shows now, specifically for names, (laughs) but I was paying very close attention to every time Frankie was mentioned and they keep dancing. I'm like, is Frankie dead? Because it's it's being very vague, but it sounds like he's in a worse situation than just being locked up. But the conversations are it's it's weirdly written. That's what I what I'll say. Yeah, we don't know whether. Well, just saying, we don't know whether he's he's dead or or if it's the sort of situation where because his his brother is a rat, he's being treated a certain way in prison. That's what I was thinking. That because of his brother being such a piece of shit that it's making his life hell on the inside. I need to see if he has a wiki page and if anybody is <laughs> Frankie's fate. According to the show, Frankie well, is. Somebody, uh, I think it was, I'm not sure who it was, that uh, in the comments said that he's the main character in Debris. So Yes, yes. So he may, they may be trying to, write him off but not write him off just in case he comes back yeah it makes yeah because he is the co-lead and you're right in debris i didn't even consider that that it might be a a production issue it's like oh we can't book him for this amount of time because he has a show that he's the main star of right now so yeah they may try to keep that vague for a while we have a new character another new character uh she was introduced a week or two ago in the choir at the church her name is Maeve. We sounded like she was Irish based on the few lines of dialogue she had. She is. And uh, she's fresh, fresh off the boat, basically. She's there. Um, she ends up striking up a little friendship with um, Jenny. And she has a cousin that was killed in a car bomb. They're pointing a lot of signs to there being some kind of ties to perhaps some of the conflicts that were happening in Ireland at that time. And the priest, is he tied to it? I don't know. The show is dancing around it, and I'm very curious to where that's going to go. But my favorite part, and then y'all can say what y'all think and as far as if those ties exist, uh, the fact that Jackie is such a racist individual that him having Irish blood sits there and just shits on the Irish for... For the entire dinner, apparently, and, and post dinner that they had, um, even and then making fun of his Italian wife and daughter, basically. Um, I mean, Jackie, every time Jackie does a thing, you're like, wow, that was okay. And then he does another shitty thing. That's just <laughs> the guy, that's just the guy, even the whole three way uh scene where his wife, he's just like, yeah, I was thinking about you, and then he was like, I was also thinking about that Irish chick <laughs> and both of you. I mean, Jackie, you, you just never. He's he's just he is what he is, I guess. But anyways, what do you guys think about Maeve Reagan? And I think she's going to be a major part of the show <laughs> going forward. Yeah, I do too. I think that this season, uh, it's only half over. I think they may be setting up next season. I think the IRA stuff is going to play a much bigger role in seasons to come uh, because it's kind of like a subplot now. And I think that it's going to be the main plot next season. And they're setting up a lot of the key players now. Uh, and almost like little sub stories. But I am super interested to see where I, I just want to know more about her. Because the way that they've kind of talked about her and the way that she's portrayed is there's something up like you said it's all these lines of dialogue all these little things and you're just waiting for something to happen 
whether it's with the priest or with her. And we just haven't quite had it happen yet. Or, or Father Doyle pulling her to the side. Oh. Strain. You know, it was a very weird move. Yeah. You're like, hey, shh. <laughs> that's what it felt like. He was trying to shut her up. He's just like, hey, uh, come over here for a second. Like, look, lady, you can't say those kind of things. <laughs> you can't. You can't be mentioning that. Yeah, I right. You to, I brought you here to protect you. Yeah, and, yeah, and, that, and that's the question. Did he bring her there to protect her, or did he bring her there as, you know, like, well, I'm, I'm sure he did, but, you know, was it part of uh, an IRA thing, and, and and what did he tell her? Like, did he tell her to only say so much because of what Jackie's profession is? Like, does he not want Jackie finding about out about her or, or his past? You know, you know, it's just, it's just kind of, again makes him a little bit suspect and then we had him mentioning like you said some potential ira stuff uh in season one even you know when he mentions you know what could happen talking about his beliefs out in the open in the part of ireland he's from you know so it's like uh yeah like you said it may be a big plot in season two and i imagine it will continue into that and and brian i think you uh you know brought up uh an, an interesting prospect too it's like there there may this may have ties to the main plot for all we know because yeah 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 we know calvin is you know like the supplier for for jimmy and a few others it's like but where's calvin getting it from yeah uh he's not only got a supply he's got a massive supply coming in it's coming from somewhere could that tie into you know the doyle plot line it, it, are they they got to be making money somehow i mean they're with the church but could drugs be a part of it um, well, you just said a key word there too, because you know what was the reason Maeve said she came to America to make money? Exactly. <laughs> so it all could come together, absolutely, and uh, that would be interesting. <laughs> um, one more, my my last real big Jackie thing, and then we'll move on to De- DeCourcy some more. Um, he confronts uh, Karen after the whole uh, Ricky situation, and. She basically asks him again. She's like, look, re- retire. You're done. It's over. And he threatens her in a way that, and I'm curious to have, I think she's still going to be digging into the Holly Gunner situation and maybe use that as some leverage. But he basically told her if I'm, a, if he ever goes out against his will, he is going to unload so much dirt on the department that this will affect cases going back, you know, 20 plus years. You essentially will destroy the department, you know, the FBI there. And, you know, she makes the line, you would, you know, destroy the world or burn the world, you know, if it meant, you know, helping you. And he's just like, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He was basically like, yes, yes, he would. He doesn't even care. He's just like, oh, I would. (laughs) And the way he says it and looks at her, I was like, damn. So she now... I'm curious how she's going to play it. We didn't get any more scenes with her, like contemplating it, but Jackie is now a huge liability probably in her eyes. She'll either a learn to live with him or B try to take him, take him down somehow. Not sure which yet, but it is interesting that, you know, those two keep sparring just about every single episode. I get the feeling that Jackie's about to be made a hero again because, uh, and then that's, what's going to save him. Well, she might have her dirt, but, if this whole IRA thing we said is here and Maeve's reason for being here is, is, is true as well, you know, then uh, if Jackie finds that out and if Jackie busts her, you know, and exposes the whole thing, he's once again made a hero. So it's like it would be very hard for her to fire her her uh, star agent. You know, Jackie keeps making uh, making his place in the papers and everything. And he's, he's shown that, you know, not only is he uh, an essential part of the old guard and you know the face back when in, in season one he's the face now too he's what people see when they see the fbi well yeah and that's a great point because what happens like you said if you break this case if he's the one if he's the reason not even to Corsi, what if he's the reason all this drug stuff gets uh, solved because of the ties to the ira and you know like you said he once again becomes the giant hero and now she's stuck with him. Yeah. Which um, God would piss her off so bad. 
Well, it's just funny. She was sent there to clean things up. <laughs> then, After stuck in the same predicament as probably the last five people. Uh, DeCourcy, the entirety of the episode, where we're dancing around DeCourcy's uh, relationship with his wife, Siobhan, and the child. You know, she held off as long as she possibly could to tell him that she was pregnant. She finally tells him he doesn't want a kid. I mean, he, he just doesn't. <laughs> Uh, by the end, you know, he's playing nice. He buys her the little stroller and everything and says, we'll make this work. But he doesn't. I absolutely love the, the interrogation scene because, you know, they had just had this huge fight. They're going at it. And now they've got to go deal with uh, Anton because DeCourcy is the one pushing him and she's representing him. Um, it, was a, it was a great scene. It just shows how great those actors, they work beautifully to, together. And every scene they're in, and <laughs> I liked it. And then she's frustrated. She goes outside, and then you know she's basically telling Grace, you know, get your shit together. Um, I like the way it all played out. In the end, they, you know, it, you know, it resolved itself to some degree. He still doesn't want a kid, though. I don't think. I don't. I don't either. But I thought it was the, like you said, the greatest part about that whole sequence was their interaction together. And yes, she was trying to defend. Anton, but I think she she came to realize that Grace uh, is not as great a person as she was led to believe initially. She knows now that Grace really isn't all that great a person, uh, and she was. But how far would anybody go to protect their kids? So even though Anton's a giant piece of shit, Grace is still going to try and protect her kids. That's a parental thing. And now that uh, Shaban is caught up in all that, I'm really curious as to how far this will go. Because she is, I think initially, she was trying to stay out of it, but she needs grace because she's trying to run for city council. And they said that, you know, she needs her votes. And now the only way that she can get them is through grace. So her ties to Gr I think this is going to play whether or not Grace is willing to let Anton go. I think that's what's going to it's going to come down to more than whether or not uh, Shabon gives up. Right, and that's a heartbreaking decision for for uh, any parent. But you know, she's her eyes are starting to open, and people are asking her, "It's like, how did you not see this?" And you know, it has to be one of those things where you know, like with any parent, it's like you really wouldn't want to see that in your own child. But she's because she, when she visited him, she's like, I barely recognize that person. She's like, that didn't seem like my son. You know, when she's talking to the to the to the priest and everything, you know. And so, like you said, she may have to let him go in in order to keep everything else together. And you know, we know Anton is that far gone. I did say the right one this time, right? Yes. <laughs> like, uh, but. You know, maybe she doesn't know. Maybe she thinks there's a chance of redemption because she doesn't know everything he's done. You know, but uh, but that would be the one thing that could save her family. Her youngest son could potentially live a normal life, go to college, etc. You know, and and she could continue her community action. Do you think this is basically my last question? Unless you guys have anything else you want to say, do you think they will ever pin? Because at, at the core of this, DeCourcy's main focus. He wants someone to pay for the death of Raina, the young girl that was killed on Valentine's Day. That's sort of the, the main function of what he's doing. Will anyone ever, um, will it attach, will that crime attach itself to anybody? We know they were all there. They were all pulling triggers as far as whose bullet hit her, who knows. But will one of the Campbell brothers go down for that? Will somebody else? Um, how far will DeCourcy go to bring justice to that situation, or will it get let go? I think that's going to be the root of DeCourcy's morality um, as far as this storyline. I think that it's going to end up being Calvin that uh, either takes the fall for it or turns on his brother. Because uh, he seems to be the one who's wrestling with this those demons the most. And I really think, I really think that he's going to be the one that ends up... Uh, winning this case for DeCourcy. Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree. You know, like Calvin, Calvin's the one with the, uh, well, he's the brother with the conscience. And we, and we see that episode after episode that, you know, what they've been doing is really weighing on him. And, uh, you know, and, and he doesn't want anything to do with his life and he feels very guilty about the things that have happened. So, 
yeah, I feel like at some point Calvin's just going to, like you said, he's going to break. Um, that's all I have this week. Uh, is there any other topic or anything else you guys want to discuss regarding city on a hill season two, episode number four? Uh, not really, but I did think that the stroller was super funny because it looked like a stroller from like the 1920s or some shit. It was cool, but you know, it looked expensive as hell. It did. Yeah. (laughs) That was my first thought. I was like, how much is that shit? Of course, he and his wife have too much money. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, but, uh, but yeah, I just, well, just want to, hmm? he even mentions that he was just like us being selfish is what kind of brought us together. Yeah. So I thought that was funny because now they're spending a ridiculous amount on this kid when they both make a shit ton of money, but it's just funny that he realizes that them being selfish, they've always been selfish. This isn't like a new thing. The course is a realist and my eyes, the way he views everything is, it... And he knows what he, you know, he's not, that's not, to me, that's not, if you legitimately know, this is my own personal belief, so I'm going on my little thing here. If you know in your heart of hearts that you, you having a child, you're not going to be able to be there for them. And it's just something you don't want to do. Don't have one. <laughs> don't. And that seems and, to be just the course he's reasoning too. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and he's, he's like, concerned. I don't. <laughs> now, now, is she someone who could? Because she's saying, you know what? That's how that is how I was. But you know, she, she does. She clearly wants a family. Mm-hmm. She clearly wants a kid. Will she be there and everything? I mean, I don't know. That you know, we're predicting what a fictional character would would do. But um, De Corsi, I think, is probably on the writer side of this than she is, as far as my personal thoughts right now in the and what we've been shown. But, well, yeah, yeah. Even Shaban's mother mentions her concerns given both their jobs. But, um, but yeah. You, any other thoughts on that or anything else? No. No, I think that's it. And you know, and I, I think I'm doubling down on the idea that you know, Jackie and DeCourcy will wind up in an enemy of my enemy situation <laughs> with Jackie's boss. Oh, I hope that that would be an interesting plot line. Yeah, you said that last week. Um, you might, yeah. Um, that might happen. But uh, yeah, thanks for everybody who's listened. Um, we enjoy doing these shows. Please hit the sub button if you've not. Big Sky's back. Go check that review out. Um, <laughs> and and uh, yeah, we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>